Okay, so hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go over an example that will show how we can illustrate uh, trade using the production possibilities frontier model. And we'll see that there's gains from trade when there's specialization according to comparative advantage. So suppose we have two traders, Michigan and Florida. Uh, they can both produce cars and oranges. We're going to use the production possibilities frontier model to analyze the following situation. Be sure your, your response is model clear economic reasoning and address each item, and then you can sketch your graphs by hand. Okay, so here's the exercise. So suppose it always takes Florida 10 labor hours to make each car and one labor hour to make each crate of oranges, while it always requires Michigan two labor hours to make each car and eight labor hours to make each crate of oranges. Further, suppose each nation has 80 labor hours available. Draw the production possibilities frontier for each state. So I don't know, maybe you want to take a screenshot or write down the problem, stop the video, whatever you need to do. Uh, what's the opportunity cost of one car for Florida and one for Michigan? What about for one crate of oranges for both states? I call them nations down here. So suppose each nation specializes according to comparative advantage and then trades with the other nation. On your graphs, label the bundle each produces when specializing, as well as one previously infeasible bundle that each is able to consume, assuming the two nations trade with each other. And basically here, I'm just trying to kind of coach you to finding a bundle where they are both gaining from trade. And then lastly, write a paragraph or two to summarize your results. Okay, so let me go back up. This is the part that's got all the interesting data. The first question you might have is, are we going to draw a linear production possibilities frontier or one with a bowed production possibilities frontier? Like, is there going to be kind of a curve or is it going to be a straight line? Well, what I say in, my, in the lecture is, unless you're told otherwise, just assume it's going to be a straight line. Matter of fact, here I say specifically, it always takes, it always requires. So this means that we have a constant, constant productivities, constant opportunity costs. So we're expecting a straight line. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about the solution here. I mean, you know, stop the video or look back at your notes or whatever, and then and then we'll do the we'll do the exercise. Um, one thing to point out immediately is I've given productivities here. I've given how what they can what they can do with time. I've given you times. So your first inclination might be to draw a production possibilities frontier and to put ten as the intercept on one axis and and uh, and one is the intercept on the other axis for Florida. No, that's not right, <laughs> because this is times. These are times. 10 hours to make a car, one hour to make each crate of oranges. The production possibilities frontier involves outputs, right? It shows the it shows productions, production possibilities. Production is an output. So we have to figure out how many cars and how many oranges each can make given their productivities and the time that's available, 80 hours. Well, how do we do this? We're going to go ahead and make a table and show um, how many cars we can get given 80 hours available if it takes us 10 hours per car. And how many crates of oranges we can get if we have 80 hours available and it takes us one hour to make each crate. Okay, so think through that. I'm going to skip over to the solution to make the video not so long. So here's the solution. Don't worry at all about the date. Don't worry about that. Um, all right, so here is the solution to part one. So. Uh, first, what I did is I wrote down the time requirements. I just collected everything into the table so it's organized. So, you know, we, we were told initially Florida takes uh, 10 hours per car, one hour per orange for Michigan. It's a crate of oranges. For Michigan, it was two hours per car and two hours per crate of oranges. So that's that might be generous. Anyway, so... Now I'm going to convert these into outputs. So how am I doing that? Well, I've told you that we have 80 hours. So given 80 hours available, Michigan can produce 40 cars or 10 oranges. Mich uh, Florida can produce 8 cars or 80 oranges. And these are ors. It's, it, it's an either or. If they use all 80 hours, they can get 40 cars in Michigan. If they use all 80 hours, they can get 10 crates of oranges in Michigan. Okay, so this bottom table has our outputs. So I can take these and put them on a production pro possibilities frontier model. All right, so what do I use for my axes? How do I know which one comes first? Um, you know, you can draw them in either, in either order as long as you use the same orientation for both state. Uh, I'm drawing mine, <laughs> you can probably see at the bottom of the video, I'm drawing mine with cars on the vertical axis. Uh, so cars is the first 
uh, one, and I'm putting that in the vertical, and then I'm putting crates of oranges on the horizontal. Um, what happens if you reverse them? Well, your slope of the, of the production possibilities frontier is gonna uh, it's gonna have the uh, reciprocal, um, and then it has the opposite interpretation. So um, you just have to be clear about uh, how the slope of the production possibilities frontier is relating to your example. So um, we'll see this once we actually do it. Okay, so we'll draw the production possibilities frontier for each state. So I put cars on the vertical, I put oranges on the horizontal. This is the number of cars produced when Michigan spends all 80 hours making cars. They can get 40. This is the number of uh, oranges produced when Michigan puts all its efforts towards making oranges. And then this blue line here is going to give us all the other combinations. So suppose you don't want to just use all your resources for cars, you don't want to put all your resources for oranges, you want to do something in the middle. Well there's infinitely many different things you could produce and they're all collected on this frontier. right? And then the same thing for Florida. They could produce eight cars or eight uh, crates of oranges or lots of different things in between. Okay, so next we have to figure out opportunity costs. So what's the opportunity cost of one car for Florida and one for Michigan? And then what about oranges? Well, Florida's opportunity cost for one car is the 10 oranges it gives up. So we can get this from, uh, we can kind of reason to this from two ways. So one thing we could do, and I like thinking about time sometimes, and that is, okay, so what's the resource that Florida is using to make a car? Well, when Florida makes a car, it's going to use 10 hours. And what else could it have done with those 10 hours? What's the opportunity cost? What is it sacrificing? Well, with those 10 hours, it's giving up the ability to make, uh, to make 10 oranges because it costs them one hour per uh, crate of oranges. Right? So that's one way to look at it. Or you could look at just uh, you could look just at outputs and you could say, okay, well, I can make eight cars or I can make 80 crates of oranges. Um, if, I, if I think carefully, I, I realize, oh, for, you know, for, uh, for, every, for every car, I, I lose the ability to make, uh, I, to lose the ability to make 10 oranges. Or you know, if we see this from our, from our graph, right? Okay. Uh, Michigan's opportunity cost of one car is the one-fourth oranges it gives up. I think probably getting the easiest is to say, okay, what's the opportunity cost of making a car? Well, making a car requires two hours for Michigan. And using those two hours, Michigan could have instead been making oranges. Two hours is one-fourth of the requirement to make a crate of orange, right? Because two is one-fourth of eight. So those two hours that could have been used to make a car, alternatively could have been used to make one-fourth a crate of oranges, right? All right. Or we could look at this and we could say, oh, well, the ratio is, you know, four cars to one crate of oranges. So one car to one fourth crate of oranges. Yeah. Same, same sort of thing as we did before. So you, in other words, you can reason to the opportunity cost from productivities or from outputs, whichever seems most natural to your mind. And then I say, what about for one crate of oranges? Well, we don't have to do any additional work, uh, right? So the, if the opportunity cost of one car is 10 oranges, then the opportunity cost of one orange must be one-tenth cars. And if the opportunity cost of one car is one-fourth oranges for Michigan, then the opportunity cost of one crate of oranges must be four cars. Okay, so, so we get that pretty clearly. Um, and I would probably do that to save time. Once you calculate the opportunity cost going from one direction to the other, from cars in terms of oranges, then calculate it from oranges in terms of cars by taking the reciprocal. I, I would then read this line and match it up to the data and make sure that it fits, right? To make sure that you haven't made a mistake. Okay, so the next question is, uh, suppose each nation specializes according to comparative advantage and then trades with the other. So, um, so the first thing, before we do any of this labeling thing, who has the comparative advantage in each good? Well, comparative advantage is according to who has the lowest opportunity cost. So I just look for low numbers here, and then I find the goods that are involved. Well, the lowest number is one-tenth per car. So Florida's opportunity cost of oranges is one-tenth. Michigan's opportunity cost of oranges is four. So Florida has this comparative advantage in making oranges by virtue of needing to sacrifice the fewest cars to make oranges. 
If Florida has a comparative advantage in oranges, we know that Michigan must have a comparative advantage in cars. And sure enough, if we compare their opportunity cost, the opportunity cost of making a car is 10 oranges. For Florida, the opportunity cost of a car for Michigan is one-fourth oranges. So it costs Michigan fewer oranges to make one car. Therefore, Michigan has a comparative advantage in making cars. And just staring at this, you can see, you know, relative to which each state can do, Florida is literally wasting their time making cars because they're giving up a lot of oranges, you know, other things equal. Florida is literally wasting their time making oranges because they're giving up so many cars. So Michigan's literally wasting their time making oranges because they give up so many cars. Okay, so specializing according to comparative advantage is going to be, well, uh, Michigan is going to produce only cars, so our economy will have 40 cars, and Florida is going to produce only oranges, so our economy is going to have 80 oranges. And then we have to figure out what kind of trade is going to happen. All right, so Florida specializes in oranges. We get 80 crates of oranges. Michigan specializes in cars. We get 40. And then we just have to find some reasonable trade. Well, how do we determine what trade is going to look like? Well, we have to find a price that lies between their mutual opportunity costs. So talk about that in a second. Um, here is the production possibilities frontier with the bundle that each produces when specializing. Right, so I said 40 cars from Michigan, uh, no oranges from Michigan, 80 oranges from Florida, no cars from Florida. These two states, I call them nations, now I'm calling them states like they are, uh, will trade at a price that lies between their opportunity costs. So the price of cars must be somewhere between one-fourth and ten oranges, and the price of oranges must be somewhere between one-tenth and four cars. So here's the intuition. Here's sort of the important part. How do we, how do we figure this out? Well, each state is capable of producing both goods, but it comes at a cost, an opportunity cost, right? We saw from above, suppose Michigan's making cars, they can get oranges, but for every or every crate of oranges Michigan gets, they have to give up four cars. So the effective price, the implicit price of, of getting oranges for Michigan is four cars, which means if Michigan can get cars or can get oranges from Florida at a price of fewer than four, uh, than four cars, Michigan will be happy. Uh, on the other hand, suppose Florida makes only oranges but decides they want some cars. Well, if Florida tries to get a car, they must give up 10 oranges. Well, instead, if the, if the price of a car buying from, if, if the price of a car for Florida to buy from Michigan is less than, um, is less than 10 oranges, then Florida is going to be really happy. Okay, so we want to trade that lies between their comparative between their opportunity costs. So here is this exactly. Um, I'll just propose one trade. So you could find this by listing out this um, inequality statement, picking a number that satisfies one equality. It'll satisfy the other, and then you could find out how many goods need to be transacted to make um, to make all assigned to. Uh, particular traders, right, to make sure all 40 cars go somewhere and all 80 cars go somewhere. Alternatively, let me just give us a trade. So suppose Michigan trades 10 cars to Florida and gets 20 oranges in exchange. What this means is the price of one car is two oranges, or the price of one orange is one half car. And of course, both are going to agree, because when Michigan gives 10 cars to Florida and gets 20 oranges, that means one orange is, cost, is costing Michigan half a car from Florida. One, one crate of oranges is costing Michigan half a car. Well, it would have cost Michigan four cars to make that crate of oranges themselves, so they're really happy. For Florida, um, they're getting, uh, let's see, they're getting, they have to give up two oranges to get one car. Well, if Florida was going to make a car themselves, they would have had to give up 10 oranges. So Florida's happy by virtue of this trade, right? And we can see this. One orange costs between one quarter and 10 cars. These are lying between the opportunity costs. And one car costs between one-tenth and four oranges. Lies between the opportunity costs. 
right? So the basic idea, what's the point of this inequality? The whole point of the inequality is that any mutually agreeable trading price, any mutually agreeable, mutually agreeable terms of trade uh, must be such that the price of the good from the other trader is less than it would cost you to make them make that good yourself. So the first inequality tells us they'll agree to trade when getting one car means giving up between one quarter and ten oranges. That's from Michigan needing to give up a, crate, a quarter of a crate of oranges to get a car and Florida needing to give up ten crates of, uh, of oranges to get a car. Um, if Florida can get one car from Michigan at a price of less than ten oranges, they're happy. That's what I said before. Second inequality tells us they'll agree to trade. Let me scroll and then read. Second inequality tells us they'll agree to trade when getting one crate of oranges uh, means giving up between one tenth and four cars. From Florida needing to give up one tenth a car to get a crate of oranges and Michigan needing to, to sacrifice four cars for one crate of oranges. So if Michigan can get a crate of oranges from Florida at a price of less than four cars, they're happy. And just as I said, I said, suppose our price is two, right? So just assume that Michigan gets two crates of oranges from Florida at a price of one car. Florida gets one car at a price of two oranges. Suppose, and to make this happen, suppose Michigan trades 10 cars to Florida, gets 20 cars or 20 oranges in return. Now, if this particular trade occurs, what ends up happening? We go from the point of specialization to this specific bundle. So if this trade occurs, Michigan ends up with 30 cars and 20 oranges. They'd originally made 40 cars and no oranges, but they gave 10 cars to Florida and received oranges in, re in, in return. So Florida ends up with 60 oranges <clears throat> and 10 cars. They had produced 80 oranges but traded um, and zero cars, but traded 20 oranges to Michigan. And so then we, f so I say one possible outcome of trade. Well, this is in particular the outcome of the trade I have talked about, right? So when the price of, uh, when a price of cars is two crates of oranges, this is what happens. That said, um, there's a lot of different prices, lots of different terms of trade uh, fitting to, to satisfy these inequalities. And there's a lot of different bundles that could have been produced. I just picked one that's nice and clean to study. Okay, so the, the cool thing here, though, is that, look, this bundle is something like both gain and both are now able to consume a bundle of goods that they, that they could not have hoped to produce on their own, right? So this is gains from trade. This is sort of the beauty of, of economics, the beauty of trade, right? Both are better off through specialization and then trading according to mutually beneficial terms. Uh, there's gains that are enjoyed by both traders, both gain. Okay, so paragraph to summarize the results, I'm just going to summarize my example. So uh, in a scenario, while both are capable of producing cars and oranges, Michigan holds the comparative advantage in cars, Florida holds the comparative advantage in oranges. We know this from comparing opportunity costs. Michigan's opportunity cost of producing a car in terms of oranges is lower than Florida's, one quarter versus ten. Florida's opportunity cost of producing oranges is lower than Michigan's, one-tenth versus four. They specialize according to comparative advantage, jointly producing 40 cars and 80 oranges. Then they can both agree to trade at mutually beneficial prices. One such is at the price of one car for two oranges or one orange for one-half cars. They both agree because for Michigan it would cost four cars to make one, orange, one crate of oranges itself. Trading one orange for half a car is better. Also for Florida, it would cost 10 oranges to make the car itself. Trading two oranges for one car is better. Both are better off through trade. So and then I say my, my solution might differ from yours. There's many such mutually beneficial trades. Um, what are the requirements? Well, the requirements are that um, all 40 cars gained through specialization and all 80 oranges crates of oranges gained through specialization must be allocated to one state or the other. And the effective price that this trade is happening must lie between their opportunity costs such that each is getting the good they are not producing from their trader, from their trading partner at a price less than what it would cost them to just make it themselves. Okay. All right, cool. So um, I'll go ahead and conclude here.